Hey G. How's it going guys? This is Aaliyah, the channel editor, and Showcases is going to look a little bit different this week. Feel free to let us know what you think of the different setup and tell us if you like it, tell us if you hate it. We're looking for some feedback. So feel free to drop us a like, drop us a dislike, tell us on Instagram, TikTok. We're ready to hear it. So without further ado, here's the showcase. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Nick again. Uh, we got two special guests today. We have Luke Atwood and Charles James. Yeah, so to get started, um, Luke, we'll just have you tell, you know, our community a little bit more about yourself, who you are, how you're affiliated with us, and all that good stuff, how you got started, all that. Tell us a little all right, bit about well, yourself. I'm out here in uh, Salem, Oregon, surrounded by uh, about 500 acres of hippie lettuce presently. They're growing the crap out of it here in the great state of Oregon, and we're in a warehouse um, again, surrounded by a lot of ag land, which right now they're growing some unusual plants that we haven't quite seen before, but crazy times here in Oregon for sure. Uh, my grandfather went broke right after World War II selling grape flavored soda pop. It was called Grape Et Soda. And uh, Coca-Cola apparently bought up all the sugar that was available and the price went crazy and everybody went broke. So my grandpa was broke in the late 40s, and he started just riding along with a neighbor on a glove route. And a glove route at that time was going up to Portland or Seattle, and backing your truck in and mm -hmm. loading up with the gloves that were made at the factory. And you'd take the gloves out to the mills or wherever they needed it and deliver them. And that was the business. And after a, a year or two, my grandpa talked this guy out of his business and started doing it. And uh, not only was he doing that, but on his way to the mills, my grandpa, who maybe he was just really scorned by Coca-Cola, but he said, wherever I saw a Coca-Cola sign, I would stop and I would take my gloves in there and I'd talk to the owner and I would start developing a retail program for these. And that's really what I do today. Um, cool. Dang, they're almost coming up on 75 years, but wow. we're a retail glove company, which is a strange uh, deal in the glove industry because 90 something percent of the glove market is industrial and it's really mm -hmm. price driven and commodity driven. And uh, we're kind of a different animal where we have to be really conscientious of our marketing, of our sizing, of our quality, and of course, our price and our relationships with our supplier. It's, a, it's quite a balancing act, but it's, it's what granddad set up. It's what my uncle as far as the leather itself goes and what's what in that. I mean, he was really a technician and, you know, he could have taught a class on it at some university. He was really into it, yeah. and ins and outs of it. And so we're, we're still, we're still keeping the lights on here and uh, selling leather work gloves, ladies gardening gloves, machine made palm dip gloves. We've really expanded into all, all the different kinds and those disposable gloves that are behind you, Nick. We sell quite a bit of those as well. There they are, the black diesels, orange diesels. Yeah. Them all. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always good to hear, you know, stories like that of like, quote unquote, failures turning into success. It's kind of like the American dream and something that a lot of our, you know, barbecue community can attest to is keep going on and keep striving and good things will come out of it. Um, it's something that Chuck has also kind of been preaching us, preaching to us as a company and as a team here is that you know, his motto is hustle, hustling and stuff like that. So it's good to hear that these stories are still around and that you can still, you know, turn troubles into successes. Um, so is there anything that, you know, you said it's been around for 75 years. Is, have you guys stuck to like the same plan? Is there, has there been growth in some areas and stuff like that? Or have you guys just been sticking to what grandpa started? Well, uh, the mentality and what we take as far as quality and service hasn't changed, but the market that is surrounding us has certainly evolved. And many of our glove styles just don't have homes anymore. And some mm -hmm. customers need new styles. So we develop with the time and we're always trying to tinker with new things too. Um, yeah. Trying to, you know, COVID was an interesting time for everybody. 
And being at home for me with two little kids uh, all day long, you know, this was their classroom for yeah. quite a bit of the. So uh, just having kids running around in here, a fourth generation and rifling through uh, everything, man. I mean, this place uh -huh. got turned upside down with these kids and they found an old folder of my grandpa's and started going through that. And they, the kids, my kids are nine and seven and they gotcha. got a little bit interested in what is all this? What does this leather do and that leather do? And uh, cool. my son was really into, I mean, we'd hit baseballs three times a day. And one day he bought him some batting gloves just off the internet and he took them and he threw them down on the ground and he ranted as only a little kid can do about stuff that probably doesn't matter, but it's why he didn't like these gloves. You know, he's probably heard his dad pass opinions on gloves his whole life. So he was probably just trying to do that. But I asked him, said, what, what don't you like about these? And he goes, they're slippery and they're hot and they're this and that. So I was like, well, why don't we take all these problems that you have with your batting glove and we'll solve them. We'll, we'll, maybe other people have these problems too. So mm -hmm. we put together kind of a cool little batting glove, my son and I, and then of course my daughter got involved and she wanted to do a batting glove too. So uh -huh. why not? Girls have different hands. Men and women do not have the same shaped hands. I, I saw gardening gloves all over and uh, it's yeah. ladies need their own sizing for that. So kind of a cool deal that we did is we took the best leather that we knew of and mm -hmm. we did all kinds of abrasion tests and we came to the conclusion that this goat leather from Africa is the best leather out there for gripping a bat and staying together and beating the other brands through a higher abrasion rate and mm -hmm. so we sized these gloves and put the name Eden Atwood for the girls. And then we use my grandfather's military name, Major Atwood for the boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, we, we've got these on order. We're going to send them all over and get a ton of feedback from them. But so far it's been a lot of fun and, you know, awesome. family, the fourth generation's interested. All right, we're doing something. Yeah, like for sure. <laughs> so I, I do have a quick one for you, Luke. So one of the things that you've taught me since I got started here uh, has always been quality, quality over everything. So where, where did that come from with you? Where did that start with you? And then give us some kind of an idea of, of, a, of a good example of what, you know, what does quality mean in the hand protection world? And what do we, you know, kind of hang our hat on? Well, yeah, in the retail glove business, you don't get to sell gloves or a product to somebody if the quality shoddy because they'll yeah. put it on and it won't feel good fit well what have you for what they need the purpose so for us quality is a make or break if you don't have you can't just have good quality you have to say i'm as good or better if you have good quality somebody's gonna be better they will and you will lose uh, people will develop and when i say people customers consumers develop loyalties based upon quality. Yeah. And if you can continue quality and delivery service, I mean, you're going to add value to people's worlds and you're going to continue a great business relationship with them. So exactly. that, that's what it means for us here at Red Steer Glove Company. We sell to all 50 states. And the second I work with one of my suppliers, say, hey, I need a little bit better price from you on this. Uh -huh. it's gonna it's gonna compromise my quality if i start angling and getting greedy and doing this on that man i cannot compromise quality or these lights won't be on for a fourth generation cool awesome that's one thing you know the you mentioned the diesels before is something that a lot of our customers have noticed is the quality of them we've had a couple you know like the stretch test tests and all that compared to other gloves you buy, yeah, it'll be, the gloves will be cheaper or whatever, but at the end of the day, if they don't do, you know, the job you want them to do, they're worthless. So that's something that we have seen here at GPS as well is quality means a lot. We've talked about that too, Luke, quite a bit lately, especially how when you are using, you know, the, you've heard the, uh, the old statement of, uh, you know, don't sacrifice quality on your tool, or if you have the right tool for the job, that type of situation and our products most of the time are not a novelty product they're a tool 
And we take a considerable amount of pride in not only starting with a great quality product, but improving it as well. You know, and, and I think a lot of the stuff behind the scenes that people don't see on, on hand protection is the fact that we are opening up a box of gloves when they come in from the factory. We're counting the gloves in the box. Are there really a hundred by weight? Is the mic thickness of the gloves the right thickness? Is the color right? Is the texture on the glove right? Is the pattern right? Uh, you know, does it hold up to the rigorous demands of our industries that we sell into, whether it's food, whether it's mechanics, auto detailers, barbecue people, whoever it may be, we take a considerable amount of pride in that. And we get asked all the time, you've heard them too, Luke, you get the emails, I know we do, hey, we want you to sell our product or they send us samples in their garbage and we stick to what we stick to. And it's really difficult for us to, uh, to change factories or to change you know, supply chain because of that. And we, and, and that's one thing that you've definitely taught me over the years uh, is don't sacrifice quality for, you know, a nickel. Don't sacrifice quality for a customer. We are only as good as the quality of product we have in our building and that we are representing on our brand that's out there. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely, I, you know, we're, we're constantly improving that and we definitely take that to heart over here. Yeah. And one of the advantages Red Steer and, our customers appreciate this is we're still working with our original leather supplier from 1979. Um, I'll buy it. He's relocated to Bangladesh. Uh, the Trump tariffs do not allow for China to be competitive right now in leather, but the leather is still coming from the same Chinese tanneries. It's just going mm -hmm. down to Bangladesh. It's getting sewn there and escaping that massive duty that was placed on a couple of years ago. Cool. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, baseball glove that the batting glove that you created over there at Red Steer. Um, how, you know, where did the love for sports come? I mean, did you grow up playing any other sports or where did, you know, like the sports play a part in all of this? Or is it something that you just came across? No, it, it's for sure. Uh, my grandpa played quarterback at the University of Arkansas in the 30s. Oh, sweet. So you're talking leather helmets, no face masks. All other, uh, yeah. All yeah. And, school tough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I learned ball sitting on his knee. Yeah. And uh, from my dad. And my dad played a, for a minute at Oregon State and played ball there. And, you know, I played myself a whole bunch of ball as well. And uh, mm -hmm. my grandpa, that he used to give me these deerskin suede gloves that he would tan or have tan this special way that he swore it would help you catch a wet football. And like, That's just crazy. things like that. So I'm this little kid and I live in Oregon. Guess what happens during ball season? It's blowing sideways. Boring, and yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was indoctrinated into me straight up. Gotcha. I'm climbing through the rafters here in this warehouse and I'm some Guinea pig trying out suede deerskin gloves. Cause they catch a football wet. But I mean, I had no chance, man. Yeah. No chance. But I don't know. I did tell you though, like I get excited about this stuff. When when you find when you find something for an application out there using leather, whatever product, I mean, there's a zillion products for, for us, it's gloves. And the application is going to improve upon any product that's out there. I mean, so the United States batting glove market, it's supposed to be 40 or 50 million dollars a year. Okay. What if this right here, because it lasts longer, wrecks the market? What if now the market's 25 or 30 million only because batting gloves are lasting longer? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a kick in the pants? I mean, to be a part of that. And <laughs> exactly. you talk about rolling over in the Greg, my grandpa would get up and do some river dancing if I pull something <laughs> like that off. But I don't know, man. You asked a question. I've had it beat over my head so much that uh, that's where it comes from. Awesome. So when um, you when you talk to people, Nick, and we we find vendors for blue band aids, or we find vendors for slip resistant mats, or we find vendors for you know diesel gloves. Why would you not work with someone like Red Steer, who has 
This video is powered by Golden Protective Services, the industry leader in restaurant safety products. Not only does Golden Protective provide awesome services for restaurant safety programs, but their products can be used in a variety of settings, such as tattoo shops, home cooking, landscaping, automotive, and more. Visit GPS Gloves today so you can grab a pair of gloves and see for yourself why they are everyone's favorite glove company. The, the fourth generation love of leather, the know-how, mm -hmm. the knowledge, the expertise, the passion for it. Beyond anything else, the passion for it. You know, this is why we work with Red Steer. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, you know, this is exactly why. You, you, get, you, you very rarely get that person that's, that's been generation to generation in an industry that yeah. breathes it, loves it, sleeps it, changes it, gets it better. I mean, mm -hmm. look at Luke's Smells office, <laughs> you know, and this is, this is one of the things, like, I think that there are, and there may be others out there, of course, but when you're talking quality, passion, why would you not want to work with somebody like that? Why would you not want to work with somebody like us and trust us to continue to find those people and run with it? Yeah. you know get behind it run with it you know sometimes with safety sometimes with products that we work with sometimes it's a tool and sometimes it has to be a little bit more money than the next guys but this is what you're getting with it yeah it's more than a product you know there's a story behind it all and i think the market is changing and realizing that as time goes on that you know like something something like a batting glove it's more than the batting glove it's you know like what that batting gloves allow, allows your kids to do Luke and like keep the, you know, generational business going and stuff like that. So it's cool that you have input like you do from, like you said, 75 years of doing all this, that just, it's simple at the end of the day, you know, quality and making sure customers see the quality and see that customer service is out of this world. Um, if you want to touch a little bit on, you know, like the relationship with GPS and, all of that, you can go ahead and explain that a little further. Red Steer and GPS, um, two peas in a pod, you might say. We are, uh, GPS is one of Red Steer's best customers. Really, you, you guys sell a lot of our gloves, the Chili Grip especially. Um, and we've been uh, bosom buddies for 20 something years before Chuck and I even started working here. GPS and Red Steer were complimenting each other um, sweet you know you guys warehouse a lot of our gloves out there in ohio and we've got a bunch of years here too and uh we we scratch each other's back a okay don't we <laughs> for sure Absolutely. for sure um chuck this one's a little bit more like your sided you know like luke was talking about his you know family creating all this and that's why he does what he does he has a passion for it all that you know what are some things that you try to implement here at GPS, whether it be the same stuff as Luke or like things that you guys pick up from each other, like symbiotic kind of stuff, or you know, like what kind of keeps you going and what are some things that you look for running a company? So to start with, I'm, I'm also like Luke and I'm a fourth generation Glover. Um, my great grandfather ran a company in Carrollton called Surety Rubber. Uh, they, they morphed into, um, another company that made the machines that actually dipped the gloves with my grandfather. Um, my dad worked there as well. He was a welder engineer, uh, technician on that equipment. Um, when all of the production in the United States moved overseas to other countries, um, they, they held on for a while with the equipment in the machine. Um, but they ended up uh, kind of dissolving once the machines were put up and a lot of that manufacturing went overseas. Um, we have been doing safety for restaurants, kitchens, commercial kitchens, national chains um, since I was in middle school. Gotcha. Uh, I was boxing gloves. I was counting outlet protectors, building safety stations since I was 10 or 11 years old mm -hmm. uh, with both of my brothers, my older and younger brother. Um, in, in 2003, we started with GPS uh, with that same vision in place of bringing 
high quality programs to national chains for quick service restaurants, grocery stores, and any type of food service operator that was out there. Um, we started out with, uh, I think we had three shelves, Luke, and one and a half people in 2003 when we when we got together and doing this. Um, I think yeah, we had- uh, you, you stacked boxes to create an office. <laughs> yes, yes. So we had, uh, that was our cubicle was uh, cases of vinyl gloves. Yep. <laughs> so we all had to start from somewhere. <laughs> we did. Um, so fast forward to 2021, uh, we just moved into our new facility. Um, we have um, all of our Oregon staff. Um, we have all of our Brooks, Oregon staff. And then we have our Ohio staff, which is 10 full time and six part time. So 16 total people. Um, we just added two new ones this year, which was really exciting. And, uh, but the bottom line is, is that it stays the same. You know, our, our service to our customers and our value has to improve no matter how good we are at it. Our quality of our products has to improve. The, the value that we bring to the market has to improve. Shipping efficiencies have to improve. People's personal goals have to improve. What we believe in doesn't stray. It's taking care of our people. And if we take care of our people, they will take care of us. And if we take care of our company, it will take care of us. Um, but that all starts with the team that we have around us. I've, I've mentioned this to you many, many times, Nick. We have the absolute best team we've ever had since I started here. Um, we are surrounded by a ton of quality people. We are surrounded by creative people. We are surrounded by uh, incredible shipping staff assembly and production staff. I mean, we have an incredible team of people. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, but, but as far as our stuff goes, it, it's, it's our family, it's service, it's quality. None of that is negotiable. It, it all has to be your absolute best every single day. And I, I, we demand that from our vendors like Red Steer. We demand exactly. that from our trucking companies that pick up our product or drop it off from the guy that makes our pallets. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be their absolute best or it's unacceptable to us, that's non-negotiable. And, uh, you know, as a group, we, um, you know, we, we learn more about each other every day. We push each other, we hold each other accountable. There's not a single person here that's more important than the next. Mm -hmm. um, Nick can walk in my office and say, I need better from you. You know, I can walk in Nick's office and say, I need better from you. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons that we're thriving and we're growing and we're improving. Um, our culture is right. Um, and again, I just, I can't stress it's non-negotiable. Cool. Um, aside from business of everything, what we kind of like to ask here on the showcase is aside from what you guys do, you know, the majority of your day, the majority of the year, what are some things, well, Luke yourself and Chuck yourself, like what are some things or what other passions do you have other than gloves, leather business? Luke, you can start. I don't know. I kind of been going down this strange rabbit hole lately with shoes. Cool. So that has nothing to do with anything our family has ever done, but yeah. it's just, it's kind of gnawing at me. Like, I, like the leather stuff, you, you find an application for it and it's like, whoa, this works better than you used exactly. to before. And <laughs> I don't know. I feel the same way about shoes, which is crazy because Nike's like 30 miles away. They're that's crazy billions of dollars in research so they probably already have the best shoe but i can't <laughs> you know you I, i've know. been thinking about it for a little bit but yeah you never know you never know like do they make shoes like i make leather gloves they don't no they, they don't i'll tell you there there's a different mindset when you're doing a shoe because a shoe is almost a fashion statement yeah a sure. glove is a tool. Mm -hmm. A glove is something that you almost, you don't know you need it until you see it. And you're like, oh yeah, I got to go do this, that, or the other. That'll help. This will mm -hmm. be my tool to go. Play. Shoes, I guess there's cleats and things like that, but still you're buying the cleat because of how it looks. Exactly. You're not, you're not buying it because it's a cowhide driver or a <laughs> suede pigskin. Yeah leather palm or because it's going to do this that so my mindset on shoes i might be all wet man but i really think that 
people look at gloves to do a task and you look at shoes that are supposed to do a task, but you wear it because it looks good. Yeah, I'm trying to make a statement. So sure. I took I took these batting gloves to a lab and I said, hey, here's 10 other kinds of batting gloves. These are all the brand names that are out there. Um, let's see how many times we can rub this, do an abrasion rate test before it fails. And we graphed it. Well, why don't they do that with shoes? I mean, need so, to. I mean, this shoe is going to do this much tissue damage to your legs. <laughs> this shoe will do this much. And this shoe will do this much. I mean, nobody thinks about shoes like that. No. So I, th I think it'd be pretty cool to like create a shoe that's like a leather glove. Yeah, it's more like a tool for sure. And you can know that like, hey, I did uh, whatever percent less tissue damage to my legs than I would have wearing Adidas or Under Armour's da -da 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 brand, whatever. Exactly. I don't know. So yeah, I'm, I'm going, I might be spinning my wheels, but that's what's happening right now. I am. I've been tinkering with it a lot. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, what about you? What else do you like doing? I know, I know your son is really big into baseball and you're big into fitness and stuff like that. You want to talk more about that or other things you have going on in your life other than being the boss, man? I think uh, the, the, one of my biggest things is a constant improvement on leadership. With the amount of people that we have working with us every day, the amount of different personalities, learning how to learning how to improve that uh, leadership role that I have not only here at work, but at home, you know, with coworkers, you know, with all of it, uh, that that's one of them. Obviously I enjoy time in the weight room. Um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly trying to improve my overall health and fitness, but as I get older, the, the weight plates might reduce, but I still try to hang in there as much as I can. It sometimes backfires on me. Um, I, uh, we, we have six high school guys that work for us right now um, that, uh, that are all at that, at that uh, crossroads in their life where they say, do I go to college? Do I learn a trade? What is my, what is my passion? What do I want to go for? I think if uh, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably have been a guidance counselor. So I like spending time with them and and um, and, and helping them in any way I can, kind of navigate yeah. that next step for them, or you know try to connect them with someone that uh, might be in a trade. And we might know uh, like an electrician, a plumber, an HVAC guy, concrete guy, that I can say, hey, go go shadow these guys for a couple of days and let me introduce you. And mm -hmm. see if that's a trade you want to go into building the next group of, uh, of contributing people. Um, you know, we've got um, uh, baseball, obviously, is a big part of our life uh, personally with my son. Um, and then my daughter started uh, really picking up the weight room bug this year, yeah. which has been really fun. Uh, she actually writes our workouts now and I have to keep up with her. So that's really, really <laughs> interesting. Uh, but she does cheer and volleyball and she's really awesome. good at it. And uh, so her getting that bug for that it has been really fun. Um, and then I like to learn new things. I like to read. I like to learn new things. I like to learn how things work. I like to, um, you know, be able to have a conversation with someone that's a lot smarter than me. Sometimes it happens more than it should, but I, um, you know, I'm, I'm surrounded by a lot of really, really smart people. And I like to be able to hang with them, if you will. But uh, mm -hmm. I like to learn new things and and pick people's brains that are or have done what I'm trying to do and accomplish. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you know it's it's work, whether it's here or at home or whatever. I, I exactly. enjoy working. I enjoy the the group of people that I work with every day. Um, I enjoy the the watching things grow, if you will. I like watching my kids do new things um, and and have success at what they work hard at. Exactly. Um, and then, uh, you know, getting that text from Luke at 11 o'clock at night saying, I just got this abrasion test on these batting gloves. Can I get you a pair to try out and, you know, put these through the ringer and give me feedback, break them. And, uh, <laughs> You know, we, we have a couple friends that we've done that. I've given some chili grips to some Marine buddies of mine. And I said, break them. And, you know, they have a really hard time doing it. And, you know, I can't wait to give 
people like John, a pair of your shoes, Luke. <laughs> you know, if anyone can break them, he can. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's uh, learning new things and and seeing what's next and continuing to push everybody here and awesome. letting them push us is, you know, that's kind of my thing. I, I really enjoy that. Awesome. So the thing that I'm picking up on is, you know, from both of you guys is just doing better and being better than you were the day before. So I think that shows through the products that both Red Steer has and GPS has as well. Um, I want to thank you guys for opening up the time in your day today to sit down and talk. Um, I want to thank you both for opening up, you know, like the uh, opportunity that we have to grow and to, whether it be social media stuff that I'm doing, or like you said, running the abrasion test, Luke or Chuck, you checking in on us, making sure we have everything. Um, it's a lot, it's something that, you know, like a lot of bigger companies like Nike doesn't have and stuff like that. So uh, from GPS to you guys, thank you for being the best leaders you guys can be. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, for thank sure. you, Nick. Great time. Let's do her again sometime. For sure. I'll see you guys. All right, take care. Thank Bye. you. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, drop a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you or someone you know has a story to tell and wants to be entered on our show, shoot us a DM on Instagram or TikTok, and we'll be in touch. Till then, catch all you Glove Gangsters next time. Thank you.